Okay. Um, hi and uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today uh, on the Migration Dialogues webinar, which will uh, focus on the state of Filipino seafarers amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Ellen Sana, I'm the Executive Director of the Center for Migrant Advocacy, and I am the guest moderator for this uh, session today. This webinar, as uh, some of you may recall, is already the third of a series of webinars that the Philippine Migration Research Network and the Philippine Social Science Council are mounting in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. As you may recall as well, the first one dealt on the impact of the pandemic on our OFWs and their remittances. This is followed by uh, a focus uh, webinar or discussion on the Filipino migrants in the United Kingdom. And today for the third webinar, we will be focusing on the state of our Filipino seafarers. As you may know, we have land-based OFWs and sea-based OFWs we will try to unpack the impact of COVID on the different aspects of seafaring and which, would, which ones are, hard, are uh, hit the hardest and what is uh, in store for our Filipino seafarers. It is quite interesting that last year, we deployed the highest number probably in many years of seafarers at more than one, uh, half a million. Filipino seafarers. But then for the last, uh, for the first quarter of this year, uh, the last one from April was only 392 or not even 1% of the number of deployed workers for the same period last year. So the picture is very bleak, but we will be joined today by our resource persons experts in their own respective fields in the seafaring industry who will shed light and, and uh, discuss with us the present state of our seafarers and what is at stake and what is in store for them in the immediate and in the long-term period as we continue to deal with the COVID pandemic. So we are very happy today that uh, we have uh, three resource persons. The first one is Professor Lucia Tanji. She is a faculty member of the Department of Journalism at the University of the Philippines, College of Mass Communication. She has written a number of articles on her pioneering research on Filipino women seafarers. She worked as a journalist for almost 15 years in Manila, Hong Kong, and Japan before joining the academy. Uh, we will also be joined by Father Paulo Prigol, many of you from the migrant NGOs, including my, my organization, he is familiar with the office of Father Paulo. He is a Scalabrinian missionary, chaplain and director of the Apostleship of the Sea, Stella Maris Manila, and the regional director of the SIMN for Australia and Asia. He was assigned to the Philippines yeah, many, many moons ago, <laughs> April 1989. <laughs> he worked at the Episcopal Commission on Migrants and Itinerant People, or CBCP ECMI, from 91 to 2003, and then was appointed by the Vatican as the regional coordinator of Stella Maris in Asia from 2018 to 2020. Father Paulo obtained his bachelor's degree in philosophy at the Catholic University of Parana and his bachelor's in theology at Sao Paulo Institute of Theology. Then the last, uh, but certainly not the least, of uh, our resource persons is attorney Dennis Gorecho. He joined the Sao Paulo Veles Bundang Bulilan Law Offices in 2001 at present. He is the junior partner who has the seafarers division of the law firm. He was the president of the Maritime Law Association of the Philippines from 2016 to 2017. He is a member of the National Seafarers Day Committee and is also an active participant in some, participant in some legislation like the pending Magna Carta for seafarers. Attorney Gorecho 
is a legal commentator on maritime issues on print, radio, and TV media outfits. And a solid Noranian, I will add. <laughs> Sorry, po. He is presently a co anchor of the radio program Bantai OCW, Usapang Marino, aired over Radio Inquirer every Wednesday from 10 30 to 12 noon. We also would like to inform our uh, participants. Uh, we are happy to inform everyone who is tuned in and participating in this webinar that we are joined by more than 80 participants from all around the country and hopefully with some as well who are based overseas. A lot are members of the academy from the Visayas and Mindanao, but also from the families of the migrants and seafarers, as well as uh, from medical clinics and those who are interested to study the mental health of migrant workers, particularly seafarers, and also by media practitioners and uh, colleagues from the migrant uh, NGOs and civil society as well. Before I uh, call on our resource persons to start off this discussion, I just would like to add that this webinar is brought to you by the Philippine Migration Research Network or PMRN with the support of the Philippine Social Science Council or PSSC. PMRN is a network of individuals consisting mostly of social scientists and other professionals that was organized to advance knowledge and understanding of national and international migration trends and developments. Meanwhile, PSSC is a nonprofit organization of professional social science associations and social science research and instruction institutional institutions in the Philippines. It is PSSC is the secretariat of the PMRN. So with that, uh, I already introduced our resource persons. So I will call them one by one. So we'll start off with Professor Lu, and then we'll, uh, she will be followed by Father Prigol, and then uh, Tordi Dennis, uh, because he's the authority, <laughs> we will uh, uh, find out uh, uh, about the rights of seafarers and what are the legal remedies, especially in the time of COVID. So without further okay. ado, I would like to invite uh, Professor Lucia, please. You have the floor. Magandang hapon po. Okay. I am, um, I titled my presentation for this afternoon as Disposable seafarers impact of COVID-19 on Filipinos across um, aboard uh, cruise ships. Uh, so when we um, talk about seafarers, we're actually talking about uh, different uh, types of seafarers. I call them, I consider this as a hierarchy of seafarers. You have officers, ratings, and then marine. So sino ba yung, well, um, these are the so-called, the real seafarers, and sabi nila. You have the officers, uh, and there are two types of officers, those who are on the deck or the deck officers. And you also have officers on the engine room. And uh, for the ratings, you have also deck ratings and the uh, engine room ratings. And for the non-marine jobs, uh, actually there are about uh, more than 100 uh, uh, types of non-marine jobs um, on onboard cruise ships. Uh, they belong to various departments, administrative, food and beverage, uh, catering, concessionaire, entertainment, housekeeping, kitchen. Um, most of our Filipino crew members uh, actually come from the food and beverage, catering, uh, housekeeping, and kitchen. And uh, lately, um, kasi yung the entertainment uh, on board cruise ships were dominated by Westerners. Uh, pero lately, as a, a number of cruise ships have started to employ uh, Filipino entertainers. Okay. Ano ba kalaki itong mga to, no? Uh, yun, sabi nga ni um, Elena kanina, almost half a million na yung mga seafarers si uh, natin. And um, take note, na, um, from 2012 to 2017, 
um, dati kasi yung ang ang data na nilalabas lang ng um, ng POEA seafarers uh, sea based deployment lang um, they did not they, they were not releasing figures on non marine okay pero lately kasi ang dami-dami na dumadami na yung yung mga seafarers na pinagtatrabaho sa cruise ships in fact they have exceeded the number of uh, those deployed na mga rating so we are deploying more uh, seafarers to work on cruise ships than ratings okay um and ano pa yung ano ba yung situation before covid-19 uh, there was there were projections made by the industry the cruise ships industry and they were projecting na 32 million there will be 32 million passengers who will be boarding the cruise ships for uh, 2020 okay and um there will be 278 cruise ships and additional 19 that will be scheduled to be uh, launched for this year but caramia's passengers uh, um, from North America, uh, Western Europe, Asia, uh, in Asia, including China, no? and unfortunately, um, ito yung mga countries that were hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. And uh, based on this, the study that they've done, uh, in 2018, there were 28.5 million passengers, and this provided 100 uh, 1,177,000 jobs, including those uh, uh, who work directly or on board cruise ships. And this has provided uh, 50.34 billion in terms of wages and salaries. And the total uh, uh, output worldwide uh, of the industry is about 150 billion. So, napakalaki ng industry na to. Uh, and then uh, came COVID 19. So, lahat yun, um, by mid uh, by mid March, um, the CDC, the uh, Center for Disease, uh, has um, has ordered or has advised all cruise ships to, to stop sailing because uh, the cruise ships have been identified as uh, one of the possible hotbeds for infection of uh, COVID nineteen. They are suspended stop lahat operations ng ating mga cruise ships and um ano mga ano nangyari so the, those working on board had to be sent home no kaya in recent weeks you have we have witnessed many OFWs returning home actually karamihan sa mga yon mga nagtatrabaho sa cruise ships okay um and uh, ano yung conditions nila? I think number one, when they, get, they they return home, they face uncertainty kung kailan ba talaga sila makakauwi because of the stricter uh, rules imposed by countries. Like um, there are some accounts na bago sila actually nakarating ng Pilipinas, their, comes, their, their flights from other parts of the world had been canceled several times. Pag sila nakauwi dito. And then pagdating pa dito, They've been quarantined. Some of them have been quarantined for weeks without knowing kung kailan ang balalabas yung kanilang medical clearance. No? So ayun. And the second uncertainty is the uncertainty of uh, when they can get their work back. They can return to work. Kasi um, as of uh, today, as of now, um, only a few um, cruise ships have signified their in intention to sail by the end of 2020. Uh, and then a number of other ships are expected to sail back by 2021. But uh, this means there will be less passengers and lesser passen passengers means there will be less Filipino cruise, uh, Filipino seafarers to be had on board cruise ships. And there were estimates made, uh, mga 50,000 50, down, no? uh, um, Filipino seafarers on cruise ships who will be losing their jobs. But I think there will be more. Uh, siguro itong 50,000 na is just a very conservative estimate. Kasi just by judging from the 2017 figures, 185,000 na yung deployment. So assuming that 
a seafarer is deployed twice in a year. So divide mo yun sa mga 90 to 100, mga 90 to 100,000 siguro na nagtrabaho sa cruise ships ang mawawala ng trabaho. And of course, um, this displacement or um, has been a tremendous, um, has been very painful uh, physically, psychologically, and even financially to our seafarers. Uh, marami sa kanila, uh, you know, the stories of those uh, na mga nagbabarko, marami sa kanila naka-utang naka or before they were able to board a ship. Ang dami daming requirements, they had utang dito, utang doon para lang makasakay sa barko. And now that uh, some of them, two months pa lang sa barko and then this pandemic happened. So the question is, paano nila babayaran yung mga utang nila, no? And then some of them are also supporting their families. So, uh, yun, ang daming uncertainty sa kanilang future. Um, well, aside from the number of, um, from the displacement of the economic displacement, um, it is really unfortunate that um, um, we have a number of seafarers on cruise ships who have died because of the pandemic. Um, yeah, for, because of data privacy reasons. Even if a flash ko lang ng mabilis. Okay. We have one from um, uh, Wages of the Sea. Um, and then uh, Foster Fashion, Fashion Sa. Um, MS Artanya. Ito yung sa Australia. Uh, Wages of the Sea again. And then Greg, Mort, uh, Greg Mortimer. Um, Cosa Luminosa, Marelli Explorer, Grand Princess. No, we also had the we had the uh, seafarer who died on, on board Grand Princess. Um, while I was doing this research, uh, and um, there was this uh, website that monitors the the number the the, uh, uh, the, uh, the crew who died on cruise ships who had uh, who had died because of COVID nineteen. And uh, they have um, identified 19 safe, uh, cruise members. Um, and unfortunately, when we I check, nine of them are Filipinos, five are Indonesians, two are from Honduras, one from Italy, one from India, and one from Greece. And um, this really bothered me. This uh, figures really bothered me because sabi nila. Uh, Filipino uh, crew account for 25 to 30 percent of the global cruise ship uh, industry. Pero bakit pagdating sa uh, casualty for the COVID-19, we account almost about half of the, the casualties of COVID-19. And um, also, uh, lahat din dito, maybe may isa rin pag-iisipan natin, uh, lahat ng mga casualties sa COVID-19 ay mga lalaki. And all of them are from the rank and file positions. Uh, wala doong mga supervisor or officials ng cruise na affected or um, to have died because of COVID-19. And um, yun, um, tingin ko aside from thinking of the, the displacement of our seafarers, yung the number of deaths should also be uh, carefully studied para in the future we can do uh, something to prevent uh, similar incidents just in case na may pandemic uli, perhaps we can do something to protect our seafarers better. Ah, yun lang po. Marami salamat. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lu. And uh, oh, salamat sa pag-expound, uh, particularly on the situation of our Filipino crew and, of course, Filipino passengers as well in the cruise ships. Uh, Naalala natin yung Diamond Princess and also the Grand Princess at saka yung, yung uh, Marelli Explorer. May mga na-encounter din kami mga seafarers who requested assistance uh, from us as well. So kinunek natin yan sa ma ating mga uh, government officials. 
And of course, as you said, not only on the economic displacement, but uh, on the health aspect as well, it's very disturbing what's happening now in, for, uh, in our uh, for, sa ating mga seafarers. So from the cruise ships, we'll find out from pra Father Pigol, saan pa bang mga barko nagtatrabaho yung ating mga marino at ano din yung kanilang prospects for immediate employment and uh, in the future of seafaring as well as uh, if, you, if Father Pigol can also touch on the situation of the families of our seafarers. Father Pigol, please. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Professor. I appreciate what you said. Um, I would say we have three waves right now on our Filipino seafarers. Number one, it is what Professor said. I fully agree. Allow me, Professor, to read something in addition to what you said. This is an email. I just read what I can. This is Saturday, May 20 at 5.23 p.m. Dear Paolo, I am afraid to tell you that a Filipino crew on board ship attempted to commit suicide off the coast of Mozambique due to confinement distress. And there the email goes. So this just validates what Professor is saying of what COVID-19 is causing to our, uh, especially those there on, on board ship. I think we are aware that here in Manila Bay, as far as I have the information, we have 22 foreign cruise ships in Manila Bay right now. We do have about 8,000 crew members on board. And hopefully if they will open now next week, these people can go home. So that to me is the first wave. Since now everybody talks about waves, there we go, the cruise ship. Now, I think we are going to the second wave. And the second wave is the commercial shipping. I think we are aware that there are, according to the ICS and IMEC, there are 150,000 seafarers trapped anywhere in the world in the sea. And they need a crew change within this month. That, is, that means May. They keep a fleet of 50 to 60,000 vessels. Assuming that 25% of those seafarers are Filipino, then here we are talking about at least, at least, 40,000 Filipino seafarers. So this is the second wave where we are witnessing uh, the big problem that I am afraid we are not really aware of. I am afraid we are, uh, myself, eh? I don't think I really, I fully grasp what can will happen in the next month or so. Uh, I share with you one, one survey that we conducted in our center. It is because, allow me to say that in addition to the 120 seafarers that we have here in our facilities a day, and we are helping them since March 13 up to now, nobody has ever gone out except three that were deployed. We also help 1,272 seafarers outside. We help them by giving food, etc., etc. And then we ask those 1,272 seafarers, basically we, we ask them three questions. Out of these 1,072, how many just before the lockdown, just the day before the lockdown, were about to depart? 24%. 308. These 308 guys, I don't know, let us, I, I have witnessed uh, in this place only three guys left for deployment. The second question that we did ask is, of these 1,272, how many intend to return to their provinces? Only 36%, 461. And then comes the question, uh, how many wish to continue applying for an onboard ship deployment? 812, 64%. Out of 
I think that tells us the mind of our CFAs. The big question is going to be, will there be available jobs? I think professor said it very well on the cruise ship. You did tell us we are talking about uh, perhaps January next year. Now for the cargo vessels, I think the story will be different. However, there are some basics that we need there. So from what I hear from the guys here, one requirement that is asked, actually there are two basic requirements the guys here are asked. Number one, is your facility safe? How long have you been in quarantine for? And that becomes an asset for the one applying. The second one is, do you have, are you holding a swab test? So I think these two areas should be really being looked into so that when they open it again, our Filipino seafarers are going to be the seafarers of choice. In Sana, they can get the job, et cetera, et cetera. Before I go to the families, because that is where it's complicated, uh, in this, I have been in quarantine with them for 84 days today, yeah, because we locked it down on March 13. I have no doubts to say, even if they play every single day and we invent every single day something, uh, mental health, it is a big, big factor. So I imagine those who are in cruise ship, I imagine those who are in facilities where and not necessarily physical sports can be practiced. But the guys here are 54. Now we are down to 52. I can tell you, I can assert you that this is a huge challenge. And that leads to what the professor was saying, uh, committing suicide or attempting. Another email here that is also Saturday, May 23. This came in 7.41 a.m. Dear Paulo, I just received a case this morning regarding a seafarer from Cebu who will be disembarked from his vessel, uh, blah, 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 for treatment of nervous breakdown. So again, we are, what the professor said, I think it is what we are experiencing on the ground. Uh, the last two comments are this. Uh, there is a beautiful uh, WhatsApp or Viber going around. And I think we from the Philippines, we will agree that uh, just before COVID, a Filipino seafarer going home, it was welcome. There comes the money, there comes the pasalubo, there comes the hero. Now, 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 I am afraid we are developing something that we call stigma. The hero becomes a villain. And that is going to be very heavy for the family. Now talking to them, and I go there and I stop Helen, um, talking to them every single day, I talk to some of them, no? But especially when we see faces, that means he is married. The biggest, the, to me, uh, there are two biggest feelings the seafarers have. Number one, the feeling of failure not because it is their fault, not because they are not qualified, not because they are not willing to work, but the situation is what it is. And the second one, it is the biggest fear of, I am unable to provide for my family. And that can be extremely, I think, uh, it, it tortures the seafarer because he, I cannot get a job, there are so many competitors, uh, whatever are the lockdowns in the world will not allow me or is not allowing me. And then what is next for me? Some of them I can see in their faces, I wish to give up, but then comes the question, if I give up, what is the option? So uh, for the family selling, I, I just say this because we have been in this business for so many years. But if we put together these elements, I think this is a big challenge. The family puts pressure, the seafarers puts pressure on himself, and the industry is going to put pressure. What is going to, to be the product of that pressure? And I think we need a few days or 
I don't know, a few months, but not many, to better understand what is going on. I think for the time being, thanks a lot. Okay, uh, thank you, Father Pigol. Uh, very interesting information, of course, from someone who's been in, in this work for many, many decades. Uh, Professor Liu started by uh, re referring to our seafarers as the disposable. And now they are, uh, they have been transformed from heroes to villains. Ano ba yan? <laughs> so things are not very, very good indeed. Uh, of course, not only for the seafarers, but uh, for other populations, marginalized populations. But now let's, let me turn to attorney uh, Davis. Uh, kumusta ba yung mga karapatan ng ating mga OFW? Is it an issue of just, okay, you need to be repatriated? And then, yeah, so nobody should be blamed for this. And then, uh, yeah, and they would just accept it? Or have there been re reported cases of violations of, um, well, are they being paid their dues, their wages, and all that? So maybe, uh, Attorney Dennis, if you can uh, interrogate these issues. On um, Actually, based on your question, yun yung madalas kasi na, na babato sa akin sa Facebook na mga seafarers natin. Uh, what will happen to your contract we, during this COVID time? And I, I always point to them that you are protected under the Maritime Labor Convention 2006 na on, on, on the right of repatriation. Kasi ang MLC 2006, ini, ini enlist nito or it gives the uh, basic right ng mga seafarers natin sa decent working and living conditions. Uh, para makabag-function sila sa kanilang trabaho sa seafarer. Ang madalas kasi tinatanong na sa akin, Sir, paano to? Hindi ako makauwi or bigla akong pinapauwi and sa inexplain ko sa kanila. Ang nature ng, ng trabaho nyo kasi is contractual yan, di ba? Dahil contractual yan, ang mga seafarers ho natin, ang, ang iyong employment linkage with your company ay ano lang, maigsi. Uh, maximum of 12 months under the contract tapos it will end up on your actual arrival from the point of fire. So madas tinatanong nila sa akin, paano to sir? Uh, hindi ako makauwi dahil sa COVID-19. Why? Kasi nga may mga airport and port restrictions and hindi niyan makontrol din ng mga ano, ng mga, mga money agencies, ng employers, yung kanilang pagbalik dito. Ang tinatanong nila sa akin, what will happen to their monetary benefits? Ang unang sinasabi ko sa kanila, um, your contract is deemed extended uh, until your actual arrival sa point of fire. So, hindi yan, na, hindi yan napuputol, yung benefits mo, hindi yan napuputol, yung actual, na kunyari 10 months, 10 months hanggang dun lang. So, kung ano yung benefits mo sa original contract mo, yun din ang dapat ibigay sa sa'yo. Kunyari, basic wage, yung mga leave pay, yung overtime pay, hindi yan dapat mabawasan. Naglabas nga rin ng ano eh, ang POA ng um, parang uh, ng memo na automatic, pwede extend hanggang 60 days yung contract ng mga seafarers. Kasi ang, ang dapat kasi mangyari dyan, kung i-extend yan, dapat meron ipapadalang bagong papel, tapos pipima na extend, and dapat may consent ng both parties. Ang nangyayari kasi ngayon, ang mga seafarers natin, wow, parang wala rin magawa kasi nga hindi sila makaalis. Hindi rin magawang paraan ng, ng mga money yung talagang makabalik sila. So, nagkakaroon ng, ng parang uh, permutation ng contract na extend without the uh, ng hindi kasalanan ng both parties. So ang ang ang, ang dapat i-enforce na rin kasi diyan is yung laman ng kontrata enforce nila yan. Pati na rin in terms of their medical benefits kasi nga sinasabi ng Maritime Labor Convention uh, ng ILO na dapat i-enforce pa rin yung mga provisions dito uh, that every seafarer has the right to safe and secure workplace that complies with safety standards to health protection, medical care welfare measures, and other forms of social protection. Marami kasi mga seafarers ang nagtanong din sa akin nun, bakit parang nakakalimutan sila? Tulad sinabi ni ma'am, ni professor, uh, nandun yung anxiety eh. And, and anxiety and depression, ito sa nagiging uh, parang malaking factor ngayon na dapat i-consider ng industry. Kasi nga maraming mga seafarers natin nasa labas. Hindi rin nila alam yung magingayari sa kanilang profession, financially, economically, emotionally, yung, yung kanilang layo sa, sa kanilang mga family. And tulad ng sinabi na Father Paolo and Professor, isang malaking impact ngayon dyan, yung depression and yung suicide. In, in terms of the suicide angle kasi na yan, pagdating sa PY contract, kasi hindi yan work-connected. Eh. 
So ngayon, magkakaroon ng problem ngayon ang mga seafarer sa atin kasi before, based on the PI contract, nakasulat kasi doon, if the seafarer, uh, the, the, the compensation will be denied if it is due to willful criminal or um, yung kanyang negligent act. And, see if, and the suicide falls under that provision. Ang problema kasi nito, it will be a debatable issue ngayon because of the COVID-19 scenario. Uh, kung COVID-19 will is the main reason kung bakit siya nag, nag tumalon or yung nagpakamatay, I think pwedeng magkaroon siya ng link. So ngayon, magkakaroon siya ng bagong uh, uh, room for for interpretation ng contract ng suicide ay pwedeng maging work-related because of that issue. And marami rin kasi sa kanila nagtatanong nga yung kanilang um, meron din sa tulad doon sa allotment. Paano yung mga allotment na kanilang family na kunyari yung natigil yung mga trabaho, ganyan. So sabi ko naman, kasi, ang marami rin kasi nagtatanong yung sa support ni mga families na paano yan kung halimbawa merong third party, merong ibang asawa, tapos merong petition for support, ay merong order for support, paano niya susuportahan yung kanyang mga family doon na hindi, hindi niya man kasama sa kanyang alatin. So, nagkakaroon ng iba-ibang legal permutations ngayon itong COVID-19 issues na to And, yun nga, yung isa na dyan, yung repatriation nila nandun sa barko. Tinatanong din nila, uh, Sir, sino ba talaga ang liable dito sa repatriation ko? And, yung aking quarantine. Ang, ang nakasulat kasi sa PUI contract kasi, ang sa, sa PUI parang memorandum, ang nakasulat kasi doon, in coordination with the private sector. OWA, in coordination with the private sector. So parang ang tanong nila lagi sa akin, sino bang dapat managod? Kasi meron silang, meron mga um, nag-feed sa akin information na parang pinapashoulder sa kanilang swabbing, yung mga test, ganyan. So hindi kasi rin ganun ka-clear doon sa kung sino magsashoulder noon. So it becomes a uh, challenge din doon sa... Pero marami ata mga employers kasi ngayon, they, they already shouldered. Parang it becomes parang dahil taon din nila yan. They give their their response their response they give, they're responsible their uh, care for their seafarer. So ngayon, uh, yun nga, ang, ang kanilang uh, rights ngayon ay talagang nakabinbin sa international law, yung Maritime Labor Convention and yung kanilang enforcement ng pay contract. And marami rin kasi nagtatanong yung mga biglang napuputol. Yung pinauwi, hindi natatapos yung kontrata nila. Under the contract kasi, pag pinauwi ka because of COVID-19, ito yung tatawag na, uh, na discontinue yung voyage mo. And under the contract, dapat kang babayaran ng one month basic wage. Tapos, i, uh, pauwiin ka. Sagot nila ipapauwi mo. Kapag ikaw ay umuwi, meron kang dalawang option. Uh, ngay, one month basic wage or uh, itutuloy yung kontrata mo. Itutuloy yung, na, yung, na, yung naiiwan. Ang mara hindi kasi alam ng maraming seafarers kasi na kapag ang pinili ay yung naiiwan ng period ng kontrata, yung unexpired portion, meron silang standby pay na basic wage. So, ang naging problema rin kasi sa maraming seafarers ngayon kasi yung, yung kontrata kasi is, hindi rin nila masyadong niintindihan kasi it's masyadong legalistic din yun. So, yun ang ginagawa namin ng, sa sa AUS, sa Kina Father Paolo, sa mga schools, I go and give them the lectures on how they should... Um, understand the contract. And I think that will be the challenging one ngayon, that they will have to understand the, the content of the contract in uh, in relation to Maritime Labor Convention. Thank you, Attorney. At, uh, thank you to all our three speakers kasi uh, less than 15 minutes ang inyong initial na intervention. But uh, malaman na malaman. So we started with yung pinakang malaki yung impact sa seafarers ay ang ating mga cruise uh, workers sa ating mga cruise ships. Tapos yung issues ng anxiety and distress and depression that can lead to, to, to suicides na nabanggit siya. At I think meron din yung connection doon sa sinasabi ni Father Paolo na changing of the crew in, in May. Kasi ibig sabihin ng changing of the crew, kaya nga sabi ni Attorney Dennis, maximum of 12 months, one year yan. Kasi hindi po pwedeng masyadong mahaba ang nasa laot ka. Kasi magkakos siya ng maraming masyadong stress. Kaya very critical that when the time comes, when they need to, re to, to change the crew, that there should be changing of the crew. Pero dahil nga sa COVID, hindi yan guaranteed at this point in time. So kaya yung mga insidente ng ng na, na stress at tumataas talaga yung anxiety level 
is expected of RC pairs, not to mention yung paano rin yung kanilang mga padala sa kanilang mga pamilya and other families. And of course, as mentioned by Attorney Dennis, marami rin yung hindi ganun ka-familiar about their rights, uh, hindi na masyadong na-scrutinize yung laman ng kontrata. And we know for a fact na yung mga maraming they enter into agreements with the manning agency na they will cover the, the airfare, pero yung pag-uwi hanggang probinsya nila, sila na lang daw ang magko-cover ng pamasahe nila. Itong ating mga local na mga Filipino seafarers natin. So and then of course the whole question now ang isang in the immediate na na on the table ng mga manning agencies is why are we being responsible for the repatriation and the mandatory quarantine and the provision of the accommodation and even the mandatory swabbing test which is now mandatory since May 5. So mukhang dumami lalo yung mga tanong natin but uh, let's uh, see kung paano rin mag-interact yung ating because we have a lot of experts also from our audience and participants. So tingnan natin um, um uh, kayong tatlo po ay please on standby for the questions from our participants. So first batch of questions. What uh, I will read the four four first questions. What will be the next step of the maritime industry? to support the affected seafarers and their families. So I suppose more on the, those from the cruise ships and then of course the, their, their families in the coming, as they come home and in the coming months. Number two, how about the Filipinos in the tankers as the oil industry has also been hard hit? So while we're not saying that this is all, this is the end of the shipping industry, it cannot be the end of it all, but perhaps maraming magkakaroon talaga ng pagbaksak sa cruise. Wala na yung love boat. Di pa kami nakakapag-love boat. Wala na yung love boat. But definitely, mahalaga ang maritime industry sa transport ng goods, ng products and everything. So hindi yun mawawala. Siguro may lal lang ngayon because of the, the heightened uh, uh, pag-ahanap ng, ng uh, solusyon sa COVID-19. But eventually, it will have to resume. It must resume para hindi mag-collapse ang ating mundo. So, but tankers, definitely, yung may mga langis yan, anong epekto niyan sa tankers? And probably, Father Paolo, or, 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 or sa inyo pong tatlo, ano pa ba yung ibang mga areas na pinagtatrabahuhan ng ating mga marino? We know the cruise ships, we know the oil tankers, they contain oil. Pero yung pang mga ibang cargo vessels, meron pa bang ibang mga klase ng barko that we know can be the employment for our seafarers when things have stabilized. The third question is, what are the protocols of safety and protection during this pandemic times for our seafarers on board merchant marine? And the last one is, what is done by government as well as the manning agencies to address the so psychosocial needs and problems of our seafarers and their families. So, sino po yung gustong mag, uh, simulang mag-respond to, to all the four? Uh, first batch of questions from our uh, participants. Uh, who wants to go first? Uh, Ellen. Yes. Uh, siguro, uh, maganda kasing i-cite dito yung statement ng, uh, interna ng International Labor Organization on on the seafarers natin as key workers. Okay. Uh, kasi during that time na medyo magulo yung, yung repatriation issue na yan, nag-issue ng statement kasi ang ILO, yung itong, itong Special Tripartite Committee ng Maritime Labor Convention, na, sabi, na i-consider as key workers ang ating mga seafarers. Ang ibig sabihin na huwag silang masyadong pahirapan sa kanilang yung pag-board ng ships, yung mga ganyan, because they are considered as... <laughs> Uh, keywords, ng paano keywords kasi nga dapat kasi sila ang nagta-transport nga ng atin ng, ng essential goods, energy, food, medicines, at iba pang product na so, sa buong mundo at ang kailangan kasi in recognition na to ay para hindi ma-disrupt para uh, magkaroon ng measures na ma huwag ma-impede yung um, yung safe and efficient movement ng ships and seafarers na nandun sa barko na to. Kasi nga ang, ang naging problema kasi nga nun, hindi hindi na hindi na recognize during that time na mga barko ay dapat merong free flow sila and sinabi nga ni ILO Director General Guy Ryder ang mga government ay tulungan sila na ma-ensure na sa ganitong challenging times ang mga seafarers natin ay adequately protected from COVID-19 pandemic 
na yun nga, may access sa medical care and tra can travel to and from their ships as necessary in order to continue their play to play their crucial role. So parang marami na ring mga 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 countries ang nag-expand dito, nagkaroon ng coordinated efforts, yung mga social partners, yung mga employers, yung mga workers organization para i-address yung uh, yung uh, issue na to na magkaroon ng yung repatriation, mabawasan yung stress sa mga seafarers na makabalik dito. Isa nga sa nangyari kasi diyan na imbis na idaan sa eroplano ang ating mga cruise liners yung cruise liner mismo ang dumating sa Pilipinas. Di ba? Kasi di ba before, yung iba kasi doon, hindi makababa <laughs> doon sa mga ports dahil ayaw silang pababain ng mga, sure. mga port authorities. Port authorities kasi nga sa takot na nandun yung COVID-19 or ma-expose sila ganyan. So parang isa sa naging, parang naging ano niyan, ibalik sila dito as yung buo, yung buong barko. Uh, and I think it's one of the response na ginawa ng industry na but at least yung social well-being ng mga seafarers natin, cruise liners, yung mga sa tanker vessels kasi sa mga iba, medyo naging problem problematic pa rin yung kanilang pag, pag ano. Pero nakaka-uwi pa rin yata dahil nga yung nagkaroon nga ng, ng parang um, uh, parang government to government uh, initiatives para ma uh, ma mapadali yung kanilang pag-travel. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's that's very very essential. Yung kasing binabanggit ni mo attorney Dennis during the COA hearing last Friday in the House of Representatives in Committee on Overseas Workers Affairs, merong decision. I think they they all agreed. Na yung mar, mar, mga marino seafaring is an essential industry. At yung ating mga marino ay essential workers. Kaya yung dapat may guarantee and support for the unhampered passage. So ng ng mga barko. Di siyempre, pag may aakit na mga marino, dapat ay maayos din. Mapacilitate and make simplified yung mga proseso. Precisely, para hindi masyado, if you can have the least disruption para dito sa voyage ng mga barko na to, that should be the ideal. But of course, as you said, medyo nahuli ng pag-respond dyan ang, ang, ang lahat ng mga tao because everybody was not prepared for the pandemic. Okay, uh, who wants to to uh, add? Yes, Father Pigol. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ellen, you are a very good advocate person, and I think the professor is also. No, but uh, I, in these days, I really appreciate the frontliners. But thinking of frontliners, and we pay credit to them, and I am extremely thankful to them. We pr we think of the medical teams. I I wish to challenge all of us to think: Can the world live without seafarers? Cannot. If 90% of the trade belongs to them, or whatever we transport into the world, it is transported by sea, it cannot be without seafarers. True. So we can call them whatever, we can call them key workers. I Same wish time. to call them frontliners. Mm. Yeah. Because at the moment we don't have these guys there, uh, then I think we will feel what it is have a world without a seafarer. The second one, uh, the lady, whoever sent that question to you regarding the tankers, if yeah. you look into the TOEA data, the person must be very well informed because the top, the, the top jobs for Filipinos are passenger, bulk carrier, container, oil tanker, chemical tanker, tanker itself, pure car, gas tanker, etc. Mm. So, uh, I think we cannot distinguish right now <coughs> in terms of who is going to get the job. But I think what we have to do, it is to make sure that we provide an environment where the companies, we look into the Philippines, uh, we, are, we are number one anyway. We just are no longer number one in terms of officers, but we are still number one in terms of ratings. And in this crisis, I think the nation that will go out first showing all the requirements that the world will need to deploy seafarers, they will be deployed. I mm. say a last word, Ellen, on the families. And then you can, you can uh, come back to me by the end of July. Uh, yes, it is one of our main concerns. We are rolling out uh, the second week of June, uh, what we call gift vouchers. I say this because we are going to reach out to 500 families 
in Metro Manila, Cavite, Rizal, Laguna, Bulacan, and ah, San Fernando, La Union, Alameda, <coughs> Batangas. I just say this because we will distribute these gift vouchers with local international donation to help to help if we will be able to to help these families to have a bit of money that they can spend in their needs, but also to experience less stress. What I want to say is this, we will carry out a survey asking very personal questions. For example, well, how do you feel right now? How do you see yourself in six months? What is really the pressure that you feel now? Is it the family, the job, putting food on your table, education, tuition, fees, etc.? I think, Ellen, honestly, that is another area that we have to look into because that causes a lot of stress to our uh, seafarers and their families. But again, I go back. Huh? If there is a first wave, the cruise ship, the professor told very well, I appreciate. I think our second wave is going to be the commercial vessels. Seafarers are taking as villains, no longer heroes, but I wish <laughs> to call them frontliners. Yeah, I think uh, let's we can we can uh, yeah we should not be referring to them as the villains. Pero kontrabida, I think <laughs> parang hindi natin wag natin mayagig maging kontrabida siya. But definitely we need to do a lot of education sa ating population para matanggal yung stigma na dala ng COVID. At pagka merong COVID kasi because mobile population lagi yan ang mga OFWs, even the land base, may medyo they stay away. Suddenly ayaw nang magagawan ng pag, uh, pagsalubong sa pagdating ng ating mga OFWs. But definitely, it's in a different context. So we just need to educate our families as well. Thank you, Father. So, Prof. Lu, do you have anything to add? Paano yung ating mga psychosocial intervention at maawasan ng mga stress if we can have it? Okay. Pwede yung first question mo na tanong, uh, sagutin ko. Apa, apa. Yung what will be the next step? Um, kasi I, 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 I'm, well, I'm, I'm finishing my dissertation now on social protection for seafarers. Oh. I think uh, moving forward after this, um, kasi I, I did a survey and yung findings ko sa survey, I, um, I um, surveyed around almost 400 seafarers sa Metro Manila. Uh, and uh, yung number one fears nila, ay yung mawalan ng trabaho for several months. And I think even, uh, kailangan maintindihan na rin na even before COVID, uh, yung pagiging, uh, you know, uh, on and off na trabaho ng mga seafarer has been happening. Kaya, so my advocacy is we should provide uh, or design a better social protection for our seafarers. Yun nga sabi ni Father, at narealize talaga natin na our, without the seafarers, oh, siguro the, the, there's no economy, di ba? Because they are the main, the backbone of the world economy, no? So, since, uh, because of their contribution, I think uh, we should make sure that they get the, uh, as, uh, the right social protection, a better designed social protection. Prof, and, uh, can you elaborate on that? What exactly social protection uh, do you think would uh, fit or be most appropriate for our seafarers? Okay, kasi ganito ngayon yung findings ko sa aking uh, research. Um, I found out na, ma, na marami pala sa mga seafarers natin, hindi talaga, even sa SSS nila, hindi regular yung paghuhulog. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so ang nangyayari, uh, Halimbawa, there have been cases na pagka nawala ng trabaho si, or na, nabakante ng ilang buwan ang isang seafarer and he applies for a salary loan. Si SSS, he cannot apply for a salary loan kasi kulang yung nahulog niya. And apparently, uh, marami palang, uh, well, let's face it, I think alam naman dito ng industry, uh, there are many, a number of um, accruing agencies that do not remit the contributions of our seafarers. And then, uh, meron pa nga akong mga nakita kasi pinakita sa akin yung mga peacekeeps nila. There are double deductions being made by some crewing agencies. Um, um, and also, nakita ko rin na marami sa kanila walang PhilHealth. 
uh, hindi nagko-contribute sa field health. So when something happens to them, hindi rin sila. Their family cannot avail of the the, the field health kwan ano. Ayun ganun. So siguro if we can um the uh, better implement uh, our social protection for the seafarers at saka nakita ko rin kasi there is ambiguity on the the term na seafarer saan ba tayo migrant ba o hindi you that, that debate has been going on and, uh, and unfortunately that debate also affects the social protection of our seafarers bakit bakit ganun kasi dahil sa um, yung ibang maning agency, sabi nila, eh, migrant kayo, hindi kayo required na mag-contribute sa SSS. Yung iba naman, sasabihin, uh, although technically dapat nakakwansi, pero in reality, binabawasan sila ng, ng SSS contribution, yung mga ganon. Parang hindi natin masyadong, uh, siguro the industry can sit down, maybe hold a summit, and how they can better design a social protection for uh, for our seafarers na yung 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 condition kasi na three, uh, six months may trabaho tapos three months wala uli so what happens in between no i think there should be a uh, specially designed uh, um, social protection measure for the seafarers na para ma- maitawid nila no hanggang sa susunod na contract okay okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay that's that's very interesting kasi po uh, prof lu Sometimes we envy the seafarers so, kumpara sa land base sabi namin ang very much in order as systematic ang ang contributions ng seafarers kasi the the manning agencies shoulder the half the employers uh, contributions sa SSS sa field health baka meron pa nga diyang employment compensation ano tapos yun pala may ganyan ding mga mga issues sa seafarers but definitely yeah this is something that uh, we must uh, flag no with our policy makers but then related to that narinig ko yung intervention kasi ni ni attorney Dennis na libawa suicide which we we have incidents of suicide already na yun nga challenging it na proving it that it can be work related especially if it's uh, because of covid pero of course yung isa ring provision diyan na uh, you may not the, the heirs of the seafarer may not be entitled kung hindi kung hindi tatanggapin yung not work related so then on the other hand mabuti na lang in a way there is this mandatory insurance provision of RA 10022 yes. no na suicide or whatever meron kang 10,000 US dollars pero kumusta ba attorney yung challenging some of these issues na yun know, work related not work related and then specifically on the repatriation costs the, and that so yung flights Uh, international fares plus yung kasi now all uh, arriving Filipino migrant workers or all arriving Filipinos from overseas must undergo 14-day quarantine in a hotel. Hindi sila papayagan kahit sa may bahay sila sa Metro Manila. It has to be in a hotel designated by our by our government. Pag OFWs, kinocover yan ng OWA. Pero bukang sa bahagi ng seafarers Apparently, they try to uh, request the the agencies, the manning agencies, to provide those as well related to the mandatory quarantine, of course, to the to the food for the 14-day minimum quarantine plus the swab. Is the swabbing also covered by the manning agencies? So, ano ba yung thoughts mo on the costs? Um, meron kasi in issue si PUA yung memo 320. Uh, kung saan ni require yung 14 day ano nga yung 14 day quarantine ng mga seafarers nakakonekta din to sa DOH na circular um, ang nakasulat kasi lang ng una dito ay yung merong mga symptoms lang ng COVID-19 uh, pero wala namang specifically din sinasabi doon is shoulder in quarantine ng mga hindi uh, walang si walang COVID-19 Um, lumabas lang kasi ito nung, nag, nung pagtiniting na mo yung DOH website na posted nung March 2, 2020, nakasulat doon na mga OFW makakauwi sa kanilang bahay pero pagdating nila dito, kailangan idaan sila lahat sa mandatory 14-day uh, quarantine. Uh, meaning, uh, yung DOH ang nagaano ng mga person with PUM, yung may mga... Uh, 
may mga symptoms. Pero, uh, ini-invoke kasi ito ng DOH, yung Circular 0063-2020, yung mga repatriation from China, pero na-invoke rin ito para i-ano rin yung mga mandatory quarantine ng repatriated OF OFW as uh, na Philipp kasama ng Filipino seafarers na kahit hindi sila wala silang symptoms. So parang lumalabas nito na napipilitang i-quarantine sila because of the yung sa website na yan, yung sa ano ng DOH website na ini-issue nila na naka nilift nila nung March 20 March 2, 2020. Ah. Pero kasi pero yung latest na advisory from uh, POEA and OWA starting I think May 5 lahat na should undergo mandatory COVID test. So yes. yung OFWs will be, the cost will be covered by OWA for land-based. Claro yun, for OWA, land-based. Pero yung seafarers, yun yung palaging, yun nga, yun as much as, umaangal yung money agency because of course, they're losing a lot of money kasi nga it's a multi-billion industry. Pero yung ganun ba? But from your legal point of view as well, na may konting moral uh, obligation, ano bang tingin mo sa sitwasyon ngayon? Um, kasi, based on sa Maritime Labor Convention, kasi meron din parang entitlement kasi mga seafarers natin on the medical care. Ang question ah. na lang kasi dyan, dahil nga pagbalik nila dito, dahil natatapos yung kontrata nila, yung obligation ng, ng company nawawala pagdating sa Philippines. So ngayon, yung, yung kanilang obligation, you have to you have to lift it from another uh, regulations or something na ganyan. Yung in-extend mo yung, ano, yung contract or yung kailangan si PUA magkaroon ng resolution. And meron kasing ina inak na, kasi dati, ang COVID-19, if you look strictly into the contract, hindi nila i-consider as ano yan, work related yeah. because wala sa listahan yung yes. work connected. Yes. Pero nag-issue si si PUA ng resolution na nire-recognize niya ang COVID as work connected. So kahit na hindi yan wala sa listahan doon, pwede siyang magamit as kunyari isang seafarer nagkaroon ng COVID-19. Uh, Ire-recognize na siya as work related. Ang magiging ang, ang medyo gray area lang diyan. Paano ko ang COVID-19 niya ay nakita during the 20 the 14 day quarantine period? Mm, 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 ang mm. pwedeng maging defense niya ng company ay sa iba mo nakuha yan, hindi sa akin, hindi habang nasa barko. Hindi na sa amin. <laughs> na expose ka kunyari sa nakasama mo doon sa mm, ano, mm. doon sa quarantine or doon sa trans pag transport sa iyo. So so doon at least kasi may one step forward <laughs> na na ang COVID-19 ay ni-recognize as work rate. Kasi ang, 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 ang ILO kasi noon pa, nag-issue siya ng, mga, ng isang resolution na sinasabi niya na isama ang disputable presumption uh, principle sa COVID-19. Kasi isa daw to hmm. sa, mga, pwede, sa isa mga sakit na pwedeng uh, makuha ng isang seafarer sa kanyang work area. Sa ngayon kasi maraming countries, including the Philippines, wala yan sa listahan niya until right. nag-issue si PUA nung, nung resolution niya na COVID-19 is work-connected. Okay. Uh, there are may, there's second batch of questions dito. Uh, from any one of you, uh, how have you tapped mass media or social media to help remove the stigma against si Ferris? So, eh, kayo ang aming resource person. So, anyone can... can uh, Respond to that. Kayo ba yung mga mahilig sa Facebook? Are you contributing para mas maintindihan yung COVID so that walang nakatouch the stigma to anyone who has it but also for our population and the moving ating mga OFWs. Second question, my husband is a seafarer. Nasa tanker daw po siya. Presently on board. So paano daw siya pag, 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 pag uwi niya dito? Uh, ano ang um, and it depends on the manning agency if they will uh, how will he how, how will he disembark do we have existing you know again uh, asking about existing protocols pag dumadating na dito sa ating airport ano ba ang ina, ina expect natin for these arriving filipinos and i think arriving filipinos OFWs in particular, sea base and land base in particular. But may protocol yan. So I will ask the, the three of you or any one of you to respond to that. What is the suicide rate among seafarers? Yan ba ay higher than the general average? For example, may ba tayong masasabi doon na data? And then related again to the stigma, 
he doesn't the 14 day force quarantine for all OFWs and seafarers reinforce the stigma against the migrants and seafarers against OFWs and seafarers ganun ba tinitingnan yung uh, mandatory 14 day quarantine na nakakadagdag lalo ng stigma anong tingin ninyo so who wants to go first and of course father naalala ko lang you mentioned about the 500 the gift vouchers uh, targeting 500 families, parang tagaluson lang. Uh, are you not extending or reaching out to Region 6 and Region 7 where we have a lot of seafarers as well? So, dagdag ko lang yon. Who wants to go first? Ayan, si Father Dakangiti. Ah, Father, <laughs> ikaw daw ang unang sabagot. Stigma and uh, the protocols and yeah, how can we further assist yeah. the seafarers yeah. and families? The families, Helen, we unfortunately or fortunately, we have to to respect the intention of the donor. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I add this with the mass media. So what are we doing? We had uh, last week, we had an AOS meeting where we brought up what you are saying. How can we contribute in a positive way? Because I agree with you. I think we, we in whatever we do, we have to help the society to understand. And that is where we must, my opinion at least, we must respect protocols until we have a vaccine so that we can go on until we find it. But definitely, I will agree. I will agree because uh, uh, my experience here is the guys want to go home, but I have to issue a certificate of quarantine. Who am I to do that? And yet I do it because they can prove they have been in this jail for a number of days. That reinforces the idea that the seafarer, the hero, is going home and perhaps no longer as a hero. So I think it is our duty to really to reinforce a uh, seafarer is, is like anybody else. He's doing a huge favor to us. He's working for us. He, at this point, he happened to be in Manila on board of a commercial or cruise ship vessel. It does not necessarily mean he or she carries the virus. Yeah. No, I, I think we have to work in that line. Mm -hmm. Mass media plays a huge role. So that is what we are trying to do. But I have to tell, to be very honest, huh? I am not so good at that level, but I support the idea. So thank you, Ellen, for doing that. Suicidal, suicidal rates, it is a good question. Uh, what I know, it may not be the numbers of Japan, it may not be the numbers of Australia, but I don't think we should look into numbers. We should look into what causes the suicide. This guy lives to find a job, to feed a family, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He he ends up in a coffin. If it is for me, in my opinion, if it is one or a thousand, of course it does make a difference. What we know, and the person who asked the question is correct, there is also uh, the suicide among cadets is on the rise. So then we can throw back the question, why he or she commits suicide? In Dipo Kayayan, in Dipo Akomaruno, or the pressure is so much that I conclude better I finish. In addition to that pressure now, we put COVID-19. That is a huge problem. On the stigma, I already said my piece. Yeah. Okay, maybe before I call on uh, either si Attorney Dennis or si Prof. Lu, dadagdagan ko yung for you to think about. Kasi nga, uh, yung the anxiety is already high without the COVID. But now you have the COVID, dagdagan the stress. So what happens when you cannot change the crew? And the, and the, the, the workers there are just stuck. Hindi sila makababa, hindi sila mapalitan kasi naka naka suspend pa so is there a way na ma, ma relieve yung ating mga workers who've been in in the high seas for several months uh, may fear sila na ayun na they cannot even there's no assurance that they can really like be allowed to dock on the ports sometimes that because of the perception that they might be carrying the virus paano ba yon how do you do the changing of the crew so yeah, if you may respond, and then if you can think about some recommendations as well. Ako, uh, sorry, eh? I would I'd like to recommend for us to challenge the shipping companies. Please open the internet. Please 
open the internet because that is a way for the seafarer wherever he is provided that there is a connection he or she can talk to the family whoever it is a way of releasing it is a way of knowing oh, they do not i thought they are quite sophisticated in terms of communication on the vessel and that they have access to communication even if they are on the high seas that is not the case the first part you are correct the second one i'm not so sure Okay, uh, maybe Prof. Lu or Attorney Dennis, you have additional inputs? Okay, dagdag ko lang sa internet, ano, hindi, actually it's not free for seafarers. Ah! The internet, yeah. So cruise ships, I, I was told by the cruise, na if they use the, if they use yung uh, internet connection, it's very expensive. Oh! Yeah, it's very expensive, sabi nila. Kaya ang ginagawa nila, pagka, if they reach a port, that's the time that they do their Facebook, the, yun yung time nila, nagkukuhan sila, kasi it's cheaper. Unlike sa, sa cruise kasi, they are being charged every time they use the internet. And also oh. for the tankers, mga ganun, kasi pagdating sa laot na, mahina na yung mga signal, and if you sometimes they to communicate they like my I have my brother, he has to use a satellite to call back home. Na very expensive yun na ayon. And then um, kung kung maswerte ka, there might be instances that you can use your cell phone. Pero napakahira po ang signal na pangasabar ko pa. So oh. ayon. And, and, and that also adds to the feeling of isolation of the seafarers. Of course, of course, of course. So, yeah. so any additional thoughts um, on the changing of the crew? I did. This is suicide. <laughs> oh, sige. Please, please. De, may mga ano kasi, may mga Supreme Court decisions kasi na inaano sa mga seafarers natin. Meron tulad nito si Kabuyok. Mm. Uh, bakit daw nagkaroon sa ng psychosis or schizophrenia? Sinabi kasi na, na company na hindi, hindi kita babayaran kasi hindi naman yan uh, connected sa trabaho mo. Ang sinabi ng Supreme Court dito, yung illness niya, yung psychosis, ay direct result ng demand ng kanyang shipboard employment contract and yung hostile env- treatment and mental trauma sa kamay ng mga German officers niya. Tas kaya right. nga siya nagkaroon ng nervous breakdown and uh-huh. nagpabalik siya sa Pilipinas. Ang... Uh-huh. ang Ang inaano kasi ng Philip ng ng Supreme Court dito, ang trauma na inaano sa PA contract ay hindi lang limited naman daw yan sa physical uh, yeah. nature ng mga trabaho. Labat kasama rin diyan yung mental or emotional hurt, damage or loss sustained. Ang sinabi kasi nila ang trauma dito uh, bodily injury caused by physical for, force applied by without or without uh, disordered psychic behavioral state resulting from stress to injury. Ang sinasabi kasi nga Nina dito ay um, pwedeng yung kanyang disability ay dahil sa severe depression, mental torture, anguish, embarrassment, anger, sleepless nights, yung mga anxiety na nag sa kanya. Um, dati kasi meron, may isang case dito, yung career versus Godinez, yung neophyte na yang si Fairer. Uh, nagkaroon kasi daw to ng ng ano nga yung kanyang um uh, yun nga yung psychological uh, problem niya because nga do sa ginagawa ang professional in, inhumane treatment sa kanya ng ng kanyang mga superiors uh, tapos hindi kahit na nakikita na may problema siya ng kanyang mental uh, status na aggravate para to no ayaw siyang i-recognize na isa ng medical condition uh, hmm ini refuse na bigyan siya ng timely medical or professional intervention tapos yung neglect na to yun nagcross yun na nagcross kung bakit nagdeteriorate pa yung kanyang mental condition so may mga may mga supreme court cases kasi na yun nga bina, nire-recognize nila yung yung mga kaso ng ganito yung depression psychosis tapos yun nga yung yung mga mental uh, sta- instability nating mga seafarers ay dahil sa stress or yung bullying sa barko, yung mga mental torture, doon nila kinoconnect sa ating mga seafarers. Okay. Pero case-to-case basis pa rin yes, yan. So... Hindi siya automatic. Okay. Thank you, attorney. Siguro yung isa pang questions, hindi ko pa, wala, may dagdag ba kayo dito? Yung halimbawa, doesn't the four day, 14-day forced quarantine reinforce the stigma against our OFWs and seafarers? Do, tinitingin nyo ba yun from that lens? na it it further aggravates the situation or or so health dimension ay they should be okay anong tingin niyo doon actually dapat yung 14 day 
quarantine na yan, maging ano yan, clean, clean ano, uh, bill of health, clean bill of yeah, health. Nasa yeah, kanila yeah, yan uh, na uh, uh, wala silang COVID-19. So, dapat iyon ang ipakiinang ipaalam doon sa mga kanyang family members, mga neighbors yeah. na yun nga ang yun nga ang purpose kung bakit i-quarantine mo sila para ma, ma masabi na safe ka pagbalik mo sa lugar mo. Ang naging problema kasi pagdating nila sa lugar nila, may sariling procedure din yung LGU. Oh. I-quarantine uli kita nang 14 day period. So, parang yung ganung period na nakulog na ako sa barko ng dalawang buwan, isang buwan sa quarantine facility na isang buwan. Pagdating ko pa doon sa lugar ko, sa, sa bayan ko, yeah. sa kung saan ako nakatira, so, ikuko, i, i, mag, i, quarantine ko, isa, quarantine ko sarili ko. So, ang role, ang anong kasi nga dyan, mukhang dapat magkaroon ng, ng educational campaign na, na malinis na yan. Di ba? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yung, ano, okay. Uh, malapit na tayong mag-de-end. Bago ko kayo bigyan ng inyong last words, may isa pa akong question. Kasi, Okay, the maritime industry stays. In the end, it will not go away. It's the backbone of the world economy. Pag walang nagdadala ng mga goods and products and everything around the world, wala, wala, nothing. So, pero yun nga, when we go back, when the, the, the mari, the seafarers go back to the vessels, which is their workplace, dapat ay safe sila. So, will that mean additional costs and maintaining a more humane standards of uh, living because they, are, they they live in the vessels. May dagdag ba yan, Father? May dagdag ba yan, Attorney? Uh, Miss Lu, dun sa, Prof. Lu, dun sa requirements, uh, will they need with the employers need to invest and spend more when you need pagbabalik sa workplaces in post-COVID scenario? So that's one. And then, of course, the cruises may take a backseat for a while, maybe for a long while, but then you have all these tankers, container, cargoes, etc., etc., that will require seafarers. But will there be a need to, to, to further enhance the skills of our seafarers in that regard? Because the other malaking issue of seafarers is the training requirements. So will that pave the doors wide open? na lalong ma magkaroon ng mga unnecessary trainings just in the name of having the necessary skills for very few job positions for so many wanting to get the job. So ano ba yung mga opportunities po? Of course, they should, maybe there are opportunities na kasama dito sa, post, dito sa COVID experience natin for, for the seafarers. So Siguro, those are, uh, maybe I want you to think about that. Uh, what, what's the near, what's, what's it, what is it like in the immediate near future for our seafarers when they go back to the seafaring work? And also, I give now the, the last minutes for your final additional thoughts on the state of seafaring in the Philippines in the time of COVID. So, yes. So this is your, your final round of interventions. Who wants to go first? Uh, Tony Dennis, ito ba? Um, siguro yung sagutin ko lang yung tanong ko kanina. Uh -uh. Na, um, we have to reinforce pa rin kasi yung earlier statement, ay earlier provision ng Maritime Labor Convention, na every seafarer has the right to a safe and secure workplace that complies with safety standards and to health protection medical care, welfare measures, and other forms of social protection. So, um, even without the COVID-19, mm -hmm. we have to make sure the seafarer is uh, physically, uh, socially protected, yung ganyan. So, parang uh, COVID-19 is just um, parang hindi naman catalyst eh. Siya lang yung ano, nabilisan nyo pa rin yung pagprotect siya sa ating mga seafarers. Kasi mm -hmm. nga, maraming questions kasi doon na nakakaligtaan sila. And um, kailangan pa rin sa mga seafarers natin, they have to um, uh, stick on their right or, or stand on if they have the right. They have to hear the voices of the seafarers if they complain, uh, protectahan nila yung kakarapatan. Kasi marami kasi sa mga, sa mga seafarers ngayon, takot magreklamo na hindi sila napoprotectahan on board the vessel. Yung okay. nakikita nilang mali, ayaw nilang sabihin sa, sa kapitan, sa management because nandun yung fear ng blacklisting. Lalo na ngayon na okay. magkakaroon ng, 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 ng parang uh, yung, yung economic structure ng, ng maritime industry, 
medyo na-rattle dahil, dahil nga sa issue ng employment, yung na-disrupt na siya. So yung issue ng blacklisting, it becomes ngayon na mas malaking ngayon ang problema ng mga seafarers natin na hindi sila makakareklamo because of the fact na bigla lang sabihin na huwag mong i-hire yan dahil nagreklamo siya na when in fact they have the right to uh, invoke the protection, the, the provisions of maritime labor condition or PA contract. Okay. Thank you, Attorney. Uh, well said. Uh, to Father Pigol, your final words? Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, number one, just a quick word on the crew change. I do not think it is um, unwillingness on the part of the, the, the government or the uh, many agencies, etc. It is just that we are locked down. The moment they begin opening flights, etc., mm -hmm. I think the crew change is going to happen. And that is, I, I connect the next point. I think our seafarers, when they are on land, they have so many health tests, and we know that. Is COVID-19 telling us we need the same level of concern that is health, any kind, mental, physical, emotional, while they are on board ship. Because right now we see the consequence mm. of somebody on board ship, etc. So mm. I would say, Ellen, for your second question, I think we should lobby more on the STCW, MLC, on this aspect, health. The entire health of a seafarer on board ship. My last comment is, uh, perhaps, perhaps we have to look into quality not quantity, mm. the quality of our seafarers. COVID-19 mm. can challenge the maritime world in the case of in the Philippines, we look into that. And honestly, I'd like to thank all the seafarers that are listening, that they will listen, connect to this world. In my opinion, you are a frontliner. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Father Pigol. Definitely, we recognize that they are frontliners in the same manner that a lot of our OFWs are frontliners as well. Flor Blue, you have the last word. Okay. Uh, you wanna know? I think itong is one of the biggest lessons natin from COVID-19 is that it exposed the disposability of our seafarers, uh, seafarers on cruise ships. So uh, moving forward, I think we should be providing more financial literacy for our seafarers. Now, now once a seafarer boards a cruise ship, dapat may plano na siya paano gagastas, gagastahin yung pera, paano siya mag-ipon, yung ganun dapat unahin niya. No? So, kasi dapat isipin natin, this is not a permanent job. I can, You can lose this job anytime. Ano? And then secondly, no, uh, I also agree with uh, Attorney Dennis, ano? I think um, we can provide better, um, uh, better benefits and protection for our seafarers if they are, they are organized. Um, kasi yun nga, ngayon natatakot sila magsalita, no? Uh, because for fear of being uh, blacklisted, yung mga ganon. And then of course we have um, we have trade unions, uh, local trade unions, pero. Uh, Minsan hindi naman masyadong na uh, and we also have a uh, party list na marino uh, for seafarers pero are they really advancing the the interest of our seafarers uh, yun ganun no so mas maganda mm. siguro sila mismo ang mag uh, mag organize at ipaglaban yung uh, their rights and welfare yun thank okay. you okay uh, sa ating pong tatlong uh, resource persons, we would like to, on behalf of the PMRN and the PSSC, we'd like to thank you all uh, for sharing your time and your expertise, of course, in this issue on the state of Filipino seafarers. Uh, Doc, uh, Professor Lu, we will be looking forward to your dissertation, your social protection for our seafarers. Ano ba yung mga kailangang baguhin din? Kasi baka probably tung COVID pandemic nga, eh, may challenge talaga ng you do not go back to the normal. But there will be another setup where hopefully we will make use of to make things much better for the seafarers. No? So looking forward to that at marami pong salamat. Father Paolo, as always, marami pong salamat for sharing your time and of course for your 
the communication real time that you get from the partners all over the world of the CBCP ECMI and ah, AOS at saka ng Stella Maris. Sorry. And of course, Father, ah, Father, Attorney Dennis, thank you so much. Ang abogado ng mga marino, ng mga seafarers. So kahit saan kayo naka-affiliate, ay si, si Attorney Dennis yung inyong nilalapitan to uh, articulate about your rights. Kasi po maganda po yung naintindihan natin talaga. Ano po yung sinasabi ni Attorney na Maritime Convention 2006 where the Philippines is a party to. So uh, this is not the end of the discussions. This is just the third of the webinar of the PMRN and the PSSC. But for now, uh, pag-usapan natin, we, we hope and pray na nakatulong po itong ating webinar para mas maintindihan ng kaunti pa yung ating mga marino at yung kanilang mga issues na kinakaharap, lalo na sa gitna ng pandemic. May mga health dimensions, may economic dimensions, may safety dimensions. But hopefully, ang challenge natin dito ay mag-emerge tayong nag-survive at saka po mas maganda sana yung kanilang mga workplaces, healthier and safer for them and also, of course, for their families. So with that, I bago po maghulin, uh, maghule. Marami pong salamat uli for everyone who made time to join us in this webinar this afternoon on the state of our Filipino seafarers. A special thanks to the staff and members of uh, to the officers and staff of the PMRN and the PSSC. A special mention to the staff members who work behind the scenes who made this webinar possible, si Mr. Miguel, ang nagko-communicate sa inyo, Mr. Miguel Karaan. Thank you. Miss Ena Tagyam, thank you very much. And Mr. Wilson Villones of the PSSC. So maraming pong salamat at magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Thank you. Thank you rin po. Thank, thank you. you. Salamat. Ah,